Hello and thanks for watching. My name's Craig and in this video I'm going to build a web scraper simply using JSON responses. JSON responses can easily be converted into Python dictionaries that we can then use for data analysis. So how can you tell if the website that you've targeted uses JSON responses? Well in the case of this website, if you right click anywhere on the page and click inspect, this will open up the developer pane and here at the top you can click on network and to view all the activity just to ensure that all is clicked and here you can just type JSON into the filter box and then just navigate around the page until you get the JSON response that you're looking for so in this case after I clicked search and then scroll down to click on next I got the JSON response that I was looking for and you can tell that it's a JSON response by clicking on it you will get a preview box which will pop up here to the right you can see in this case there's a list called search results uh, with 24 separate elements to that list and each of these elements correspond to a different item which is listed on the search results page so we've got the data that we're after but how do we get this JSON response into Python well, there's an easy way of doing it. If you go up to the JSON response and right click, click on copy, and then come down to copy as curl, you can then go over to this website, uh, curl.trillworks.com, and if you paste your curl command into the left hand box, you will get your nice new formatted Python request code in the right hand box. Just ensure when you've got this code that there is a page number tuple in the param section. Uh, we'll need this to iterate through the page numbers to get all the data off the website. So now that we've got this code in our Python editor, we can start getting rid of some of the things that we're not going to need. So you can get rid of the import request line at the top and also the cookies. We can delete this. We're not going to need it. Remembering to delete the cookies parameter from the request line of code. In the params section, we can delete uh, everything but the page number, bearing in mind that params here is a tuple of tuples, so you will need to ensure that you leave the comma in place as so. Now let's have a look at the code that we're going to use to build the scraper class. And the first thing that we're going to do in this code is import the libraries. And as with any class, we're going to start with the initialization function. This is the one that we will use to pass in a dictionary of settings, or params in this case. The next uh, function that we're going to make is the request function, which will be responsible for getting data from a specific page. Next, we have the process function, which will take that request response from the previous function and create a pandas data frame. And finally, the run function, and this will be responsible for iterating through the pages and importantly, stopping the web scraper once it's come to the end. The next thing that we're going to do is define a params dictionary. We'll leave this empty for the moment, but this will be used to pass in settings to the class. We will declare a new instance of the scraper, calling it here scraper with a small s, and then running the scraper using the scraper run function. Now that we've got this code, we can copy in across the code from the previous section, ensuring that all the indentations are correct. So the request function's purpose is to retrieve the data from a specific page number, and we can do that here by modifying the params tuple with an F string. We can just pass in page number as so, and that will give us the page number that we want. The next thing we're going to do is convert the JSON response into a Python dictionary. And we can do that using the JSON library. There is a loads method that if we pass in response.txt, that will give us the Python dictionary that we're looking for. Now we can head down to the run function and this is where we're going to call request, uh, feeding in page number one just now and assigning that the variable name of response. The important thing to remember about a scraper is that often it can take quite a long time for the scraper to run. Now, in the event of an interrupted connection or an error, uh, we may have to start the scraper again from scratch. So to avoid that, we're going to build in a timeout function. 
and this is where we're going to start using the params dictionary. So in the params dictionary, if you set a key value pair, in this case I'm just going to set timeout and I'm going to set that to 60. Now if we head up to the initialization function, we can access the params dictionary. In this case we're going to assign it to the variable name timeout, and by adding self here, it ensures that all the functions of the class will be able to access the data that's stored in timeout. Okay, next thing we're going to do is head down to response and we're going to add a while loop that will break when a successful response from the server is received. So we'll add that while loop there. And next thing we're going to do is utilize the response.ok variable. This is set to true if the response is returned as 200, which is a successful response. That's what we're looking for. So if response.true, carry out the following. And we're then going to return a response variable to the run function where we called it. In the event that response.ok is not ok, in other words, if anything other than response 200 is returned, um, we will go to sleep. We'll set a sleep command for the number of seconds that we defined in the params dictionary. Now we're going to apply a try catch statement to ensure that if there's any subsequent errors, uh, we can also deal with those. And in the event that we do come across an error, again, it will just go to sleep for 60 seconds. To keep the user updated as the scraper is running, we're going to define a print update function. In this case, I'm just going to use a lambda function. Uh, you can see that here, it's just going to print out to the terminal window the current time and date, the response code that we've received, and the current page number that we're on. And then if we add that print update function to the rest of the code, you can see here I'm adding it if the response is OK, if the response is not OK, and if there's an error, I'm just going to put in here uh, error uh, in capital letters as it does not have access to the response code from there. OK, so let's start work on the process function. Now, process will take the response from the request function and process it. It's going to take out the target data that we want. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out that search results list that we saw on the website and we're just going to assign this the name results. We're now going to make an empty list called cardicts. A cardict is just going to be a dictionary with the target data that we want. This website has cars on it so we're going to get the make, the model, the price and the mileage from the car and we're also going to get the URL of the actual listing. We're going to save all this in a dictionary, and then we're going to append these new dictionaries to the car dicts list. And by using results.get method, we can ensure that for whatever reason, if that information is missing, it will just return a none value. So we've got the car dicts now, just appending the car dicts to the car dicts list. Once we've got this list of dictionaries, it's perfect for converting this into a pandas data frame. And we can do this with this command. And then we're going to return that new data frame that we've called here car df. So now we're going to go back to the run function and we're going to reassign the response variable to self.process and then we're going to pass in response and this should return the data frame and if we print out the data frame response here you can see this is what we get so we've got make model price mileage and url so we've got the startings of what we want but there's still plenty to do okay so the next stage is to start another while loop which will increment through those page numbers 
and save the data from each page. So we're going to start uh, with page number one and at the end of the while loop we're going to increment that page number by using a plus equals one command. Now this line of code is just for testing purposes so you'll need to ensure to remove this before you do a full run of the scraper. Um, but this will just ensure that three pages are tested and then the loop will break. Again, as before, we're going to create an empty list, which is going to hold the data frames as we increment through the pages. And we're going to append them with this line of code, dfs.append, and then pass in response. And then we need to uh, put in some code that will stop the scraper from running once it's reached the end. Now, every website's a little bit different. What I found with this one was that once it reaches the last page, it simply adds a duplicate of the last page onto the end of the list. So this next piece of code will first of all ensure that the length of the data frame list is greater than two to stop it from breaking prematurely. And then the second thing to do is to compare the current data frame with the previous data frame. Should those data frames be the same, the code will stop the while loop. Once we've got this list of data frames, what we can do now is concatenate all of those data frames into one large data frame. And we can do that with this code. And then once we've got that large data frame, we can save that to the local disk. Okay, if we were to have a look at that CSV file now, uh, we can see we've got all the information that we need. However, I'm not happy with this mileage column. Uh, mileage here is a string, it contains the word miles, it also has a comma in it, and as a result we're unable to do any math or any sort of analysis on this data. So we want to turn this into a numerical value. So this is where we're going to use regular expressions and I'm going to use this library to scan the string for all the digits and then just simply join all those digits together uh, giving us a numerical value. So to do that uh, we use this code and then we have to modify the mileage section in the cardict simply passing in the current mileage into the digitize function and that should give us the result that we want. Let's now run the scraper to ensure that it works correctly. Now I've speeded this up to make it uh, a little less boring. You can see here that we started at 10 past two. Okay, so that's the scraper complete and it's done 1100 pages in 16 minutes, which is not bad going. Uh, let's have a little look. If we take that CSV file now and we put it into Excel, and here we can check how many items we actually got in that CSV file. We can see there are 28,000 cars, not bad going for 15 minutes, um, all with make model price, mileage, and URL. And if we check this, we can click on one of the URLs. There's a nice Mercedes-Benz S-Class, 105 grand. Let's go and check that price. You can check that price in the CSV file, and that is correct. Excellent. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please remember to like and subscribe or if you think something like this could be beneficial to a project that you're working on please check out my freelance profiles below. Until next time, thank you very much.